Running backs. Despite their value in recent years being called into question, they have been one of the most important positions historically. There have been a little over 2,000 running backs drafted into the NFL in the Super Bowl era. And for this video, I've scoured decades of data, going round by round, to find the greatest and most accomplished running backs this league has ever seen. And this will come as no surprise that most of the all-time greats were drafted in round one. To get an idea of the success differences by round, I went and found the exact number of running backs drafted in each round from 1967 to 2019, and I noted how many rushed for at least 5,000 yards in their career. 5,000 was an easy number that at least indicates a player was good and healthy enough to put together multiple solid seasons as a team's primary or secondary running back. It doesn't mean a player was amazing, but it's enough to show that a back was serviceable for more than half a decade. 32% of first round running backs rushed for at least 5,000 yards in their career, meaning the majority either were busts or got injured early in their careers. Now to take it a step further, 10,000 rushing yards is a feat that very few reach. Let me quickly add a side note here. So the average NFL running back's career is short under 2.6 years. The physical demands and high injury risks is a hill that most backs won't be able to get over. And for those who do, all it takes is for a player to lose a step in their game and now they are a backup or out of the league entirely. In 2019, Zeke Elliott at the age of 24 was no doubt one of the best backs in the NFL. However, three years later at age 27, no one considered him a great back, honestly not even the best back on the Cowboys. His yards per carry had decreased dramatically. He's not even 29, and he's been a shell of himself for a few years now, and served as a rotational back last year in New England. I'm not trying to pick on Zeke. This happens all the time. Remember Philip Lindsay? He had two surprise breakout seasons in 2018 and 2019. By 2021, he was a backup, and by 2023, he was in the XFL. Anyways, I use these examples to illustrate how impressive the 10,000 yard feat really is. It displays both longevity, which is already rare in the NFL, and the remarkable ability to be at the very least an above average starter for around a decade or more. In other words, it's no fluke. A player doesn't make it here by accident. It's not necessarily a mark worthy of the Hall of Fame, but it's getting pretty damn close. Just under 12% of first round running backs rushed for 10,000 plus yards in their career. Now, despite only 11.7% reaching that mark, virtually every historical big name running back was picked in the first round. Of the 19 Hall of Fame running backs drafted in the Super Bowl era, 16 were drafted in the first round, 14 of which were top 10 picks. However, despite this historical dominance, the effects of first rounders are much lower in today's game. Christian McCaffrey is a total stud and is currently the best back in football, but in 2023, only one of the other top 10 NFL rushers were drafted in the first round, Najee Harris. First round running backs are much less prevalent statistically today compared to 20 years prior, when six of the top 10 rushers were first rounders. The game, in the way running backs are utilized, has certainly changed. Anyways, when deciding who's the greatest first round running back ever, there's a few different ways of examining this debate. And here's how I lay it out. The most dominant pre-Super Bowl era back is Jim Brown. Considering he won MVP as a rookie and was the best back and most likely player in the league every year he played, no one has dominated at the level Jim Brown did. The best Super Bowl era running back is a toss up between Walter Payton and Barry Sanders, although my vote would be for Barry. To pay respect to Walter, as Ray Lewis put it, once you put wisdom and will on top of talent, you get what you call sweetness. An elite blend of speed and power, Walter Payton played at an elite level well into his 30s. And for Barry, besides his superior all-time numbers, Barry stands in a class of his own in terms of ability to cut, change direction, accelerate, and juke defenders. His highlight reel is the best of all time, in my opinion. The greatest running back longevity has to go to Emmitt Smith. This dude was a starting level running back for 15 years. 
Nobody argues that he was as talented or dominant as the previous guys, but the durability of this man was remarkable, and it's why he's the all-time leading rusher. And then for the era I witnessed, Ladanian Tomlinson and Adrian Peterson take the cake. LT had a massive influence on how modern running backs are utilized today, considering his effect on not just the run game, but the pass game as well. He holds the all-time record for rushing touchdowns in a season. And of course, Adrian Peterson was a freight train. In his prime, this man put the fear of God into his opponents. And nobody has had more impressive resiliency from injury when you look at what Peterson accomplished after suffering major injuries in the NFL. As expected, the talent and production level diminishes significantly once we reach the second round. 15.3% of second rounders, compared to the 32% of first rounders, reached 5,000 yards rushing in their career. And just five of those 176 backs drafted in round two are in the 10,000 club. The most notable second rounders in the NFL today include the top two being Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb. And then there's another class of solid guys, including Jonathan Taylor, Miles Sanders, and Joe Mixon. Historically, the five names that have eclipsed 10,000 yards are Tiki Barber, Ricky Waters, LaShawn McCoy, Corey Dillon, and the most statistically dominant and only second round Hall of Fame running back as of now, Thurman Thomas. First down on that call, delay for Thomas. Oh, look at him split through. As one of the emotional leaders during the Bills' run to four Super Bowls, his ability to be a great rusher as well as an effective pass catcher in their no-huddle attack led Thomas to some hugely successful seasons and playoff runs, which included him winning the regular season MVP in 1991. As for today, Derrick Henry is still playing and is worthy of being considered the greatest second round running back of all time. After serving as a rotational back for a few years in Tennessee, Henry, at his relatively massive size, exploded onto the scene in 2018, and by 2020, was the best back in football. He may have not won MVP, but he became one of just eight dudes to reach the illustrious 2,000 yard rushing mark, which is just as special. As one of the biggest backs to ever play in the NFL, Henry will attempt to reach 10,000 career yards this season as he joined forces with Lamar Jackson. Once you reach the third round, expectations have drastically decreased. Typically, the best backs are off the board by this point, and teams that draft here are looking for solid rotational backs who may develop into the starter after a few seasons. The odds of success continue to decrease. Less than 7% of third round running backs have reached 5,000 career rushing yards, and just three of the 187 drafted have reached 10,000 yards. The most notable third round running backs today include the following, James Conner, David Montgomery, Rashad White, and Zach Moss. The biggest name today would be Alvin Kamara, who had a crazy five-year run to start his career. Over the course of his time in the NFL, Kamara has displayed otherworldly balance, elusiveness, and acceleration. Historically speaking, the two names that have eclipsed 10,000 yards are way up the list, Curtis Martin and Frank Gore. Martin shocked everybody as a rookie when he finished third in the league in rushing. Despite concerns about his durability prior to the NFL, Martin erased those concerns as he barely missed any playtime and rushed for at least 1,000 yards in his first 10 seasons. Amazingly, that 10th season was his most impressive. For Frank Gore, similar concerns about his durability were also erased. Over the course of 16 years, Gore was a bell cow back throughout almost all of it, and he finished his career averaging exactly 1,000 yards a season. And that total of 16,000 yards has him ranked third on the all-time rushing list. Curtis Martin is the only third round Hall of Fame running back, but Frank Gore will join him soon. They thought Sean Springs was not only going to play, but he was going to start. He came out before the game and they said no. Meanwhile, Jacob says no. He runs right over Landry.
Once you reach the fourth round, you're beginning to look for guys who fill a role other than your starting running back. Things like a receiving back who can return kicks, or a guy who can play multiple special teams roles. The fourth round cuts the production level from the third round in half. Just 3.6% of fourth rounders have rushed for 5,000 career yards, and zero have made it to 10,000 yards. The most notable fourth round running backs today include the following, Tony Pollard, Chuba Hubbard, and Jamal Williams. Historically, there are zero guys, like I said, that have reached 10,000 yards. One guy who perfectly encapsulates a successful fourth rounder who filled their role was Darren Sproles. Sproles was a guy who never became a bell cow back due to his size, but his receiving out of the backfield and return ability were amongst the best in the game. As far as the all-time fourth round leading rusher, that goes to the three-time Pro Bowler, Steven Davis. Davis was a power back who developed into Washington's main starter by his fourth season and had a really impressive five-year run. He is 54th on the all-time rushing list. The fifth round. Now, it's just a crapshoot, and teams continue to scrape the bottom of the barrel for talent. If a guy provides some depth, great. If not, draft another next season. The idea of finding a long-term starter at this point is a pipe dream. Looking at the 2023 draft as an example, there were four running backs selected in the fifth round. And the best of them so far is Chase Brown, who had less than 200 rushing yards on the season, and none of those guys scored a rushing touchdown all year. Just 2.2% of fifth rounders have rushed for 5,000 yards or more in their career. The most notable fifth round running backs today include the following, Kyron Williams, Aaron Jones, Tyler Algier, and Jerome Ford. Williams, Algier, and Ford all come from the same class. So that year is a total anomaly. And it's not like these guys are all pro level guys. Historically speaking, zero fifth round running backs have made the Hall of Fame. Zero are in the 10K club, and only four guys have even reached 5,000 yards. The most notable was Michael Turner. Turner was initially a backup to Ladanian Tomlinson in San Diego, and he ended up being quite a surprise. Tomlinson in his prime was impossible to slow down and was the best back in the league. And just when the defense thought they had a second to catch their breath, they got punched in the face by Turner. 2006 was an insane year for Tomlinson, and Turner was arguably the best backup in the league. He eventually did enough to become a full-time starter in Atlanta, and for a few years, was a beast bell cow back for them. He runs it over the left side, Turner with the move. And Turner with a lot of room. Turner with even more room. Michael Turner all the way into midfield. And finally, we've got a first down in this game. Turner had an all-pro run in 2008, and finished his career with five straight seasons with double-digit touchdowns. As we continue to go on, the odds of success continue to diminish. Less than 2% of sixth-round running backs have reached 5,000 career yards, and zero have reached 10,000. These guys are more likely to be cut than to become a team's starting back. In the last seven drafts, 25 running backs were selected in the sixth round. 10 of those are out of the league entirely. And really, there's only two notable names, Khalil Herbert, who's an excellent rotational back, and Elijah Mitchell, who had a solid rookie year, but is now a third string back in San Francisco. The rest are special teamers or have carried the ball very little in their careers. The most notable sixth rounder in the league today would be Latavius Murray, who's now in the twilight of his career, but had a pretty good run back when he started in Oakland. And also historically, Murray is one of the most notable sixth round running backs ever. However, the best sixth round running back, and it's not even close, is Terrell Davis. After beginning his first training camp as the sixth string back, Davis was a long shot to make the roster. Now, I remember telling my mom this, and I said, Mom, I was like, I was like, yeah, you know I mean, that's cool. I, I got drafted. I'm, 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 I'm. She, she's like, well, you're not excited? I was like, not really. She was like, why? She thought I was being ungrateful. I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm just, I said, sixth round pick. They just, they, they just gonna use me as camp bait. They're not drafting me in a sixth round uh, thinking that, that I'm going to be a part of the team. But after making an impression on the coaching staff with this hit in the preseason, Davis worked his way all the way up to the team's starting running back by the start of his first regular season. The rest is history. He went from surprise rookie 
to standout All-Pro, then to the reason the Broncos won the Super Bowl, taking home Super Bowl MVP. And finally, he won regular season MVP as he reached 2,000 yards in year four, and also helped the Broncos reach another Super Bowl victory. It's one of the greatest four-year runs by any player ever, let alone a sixth round pick. Davis, right side, room to run, cuts it back, will go for the touchdown. Unfortunately, injuries completely derailed his career and he only played three more seasons. But because Terrell Davis was a massive reason why Denver won two Super Bowls, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Counter drop. Up the middle, touchdown. Jamal Anderson out of the backfield. And there's the 31st. The final round, at least in the modern day, they used to have more rounds, but they got rid of them. And you want to know why? Well, this had something to do with it. In the 8th through 17th round, when they existed, 692 backs were selected and only three of them ever rushed for 5,000 yards or more in their careers. Most of them probably never even played a snap. For the seventh round, it's not much better. Only two of the 225 seventh rounders selected have reached 5,000 yards, neither of which reached 10,000. The notable seventh round running backs today include Isaiah Pacheco, that's it. Brock Purdy had the next most rushing yards by a seventh rounder in 2023, and I'm not even joking, which really goes to show how rare it is to succeed as much as Pacheco has. Historically, Marion Butts and Jamal Anderson are the two most notable names. Jamal Anderson was a backup who came out of nowhere to have four solid seasons, capped off by his incredible 1998 run. You want to talk about a statistical anomaly. In 1998, in a year that featured Barry Sanders, Emmitt Smith, Marshall Falk, Eddie George, and Curtis Martin, the top two rushers in the league were sixth rounder Terrell Davis and seventh rounder Jamal Anderson. Also, both the Broncos and Falcons made the Super Bowl that year. So these were the two biggest impact players on their respective teams in the biggest game. Match up very well. First down and 10. Priest Holmes and Richardson. Look at him cut outside. 